Digital Dilemma, Lesson 2. I need a volunteer to play Usher for me. Somebody who's willing to play Usher for me. I need a volunteer. I don't have Brandon, so I'll volunteer. Your sister Yates, go. <laughs> sister Yates, you're going to need to bring your phone.
send a file, a picture, if you will. Oh, that's right. I was right the first time. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need that back. And I can't see it from my phone. <laughs> I don't have this taskbar down here. All right. Who, who knows what those series of numbers are called? And go ahead. Right. Right. Well, there you go. Look at you go. Binary. This is important. Because this is what a computer sees. It never does see what you see. It shows it to you, but it interprets it. This is the root language of what a computer sees. So when we, if we were to take a picture of this church, it's going to break it back down to ones and zeros. You with me? So what they do with technology now is they take that code and they insert a completely different message. But when they send it off to you, it looks unchanged. Neat, huh? Good. Pop that this up. All right. So now I was going to use. I don't have my. Uh, there we go. There's my menu bar. All right. So what I want to do is I want to show you a demonstration. We'll make a point with it. So I need to change my settings again. Yep, 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 yep. But I got everything pulled up and ready to go this time. So it won't take me nearly as long. See? Already there. I want to keep my changes. Yep, 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 yep. This is an old program. You can tell by the way it's written, it's not very fancy. It's called Invisible Secrets 2.1. They're up to different versions now. This is the free version. Okay? So it's not hard to get. Any Yahoo can get it. When he opens it up, it asks you. You can't see it, but it's telling you, what do you want to do? I can encrypt the file, or I can decrypt it, basically. So right now, I want to encrypt it. I want to make a secret. I've taken our common picture here, okay? This are, we use it every service on the TV there. That's kind of our screensaver. That's the picture I have selected as the carrier. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've selected a document called Secret Message. It's a Word doc, and it's called Secret Message. I've, I've selected my little password. I've told it where I want it. Yep, make sure nothing's changed. And it's done that fast. So now I can go. I forgot to have this one. I named it odd. Does anyone know what odd stands for? Does anybody smart enough to figure out what odd stands for? Our digital dilemma. So this is the result. Inside this picture is a word document. If I wanted to, I can have someone on the other side to receive it. This would be good for corporate espionage. But maybe I don't need a partner. Maybe I set a whole other program inside of it. You open it up. See, here's the thing about files. Someone who knows just enough to be dangerous, they'll see that it says odd.jpg. What does JPG stand for? JPEG. JPEG. Okay? And what kind of file is a JPEG? It's an image file. An MP4 would be a video file or F, a FLAV, FLV, if it's an iPhone. Different, there's different types and different type style of pop image files. But here's what happens. Somebody who knows just enough, they'll see JPEG and say, oh, it's just a picture. I know that's not an executable file. It's not a .exe. And they'll open it. Not knowing that it's carrying something inside of it. Kind of like a Trojan, but different. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. I don't know whose car is going off, but they can, it'll go off in a minute. Thank you, Mark, for your contribution to the service. <laughs> Marcus wants his attention. Now, did anybody see 
What was on the document? No. Because I didn't show you, right? No. And that's what I'm saying. It could be anything. But what it does say, and you can't see it <coughs> because it's itty bitty. I didn't think about that. But I want to collect. Oh, this was not the smartest thing doing about this phone. But I'm trying to maintain a presence in the pulpit and not have to walk over. I am going to. Would you agree that we have a digital dilemma? With great power comes great responsibility, responsibility says the Spider Man fan. But not everyone understands that. With great technology and great abilities, we also have great threats. Be careful what you open. This can also be done with audio files. I have another program, I'm not going to show you a demonstration, but I can easily send, it, send you a song. And in the song carries another file. So don't open it if you don't know who it's from. Don't open it if you do know who it's from, but you're not sure if they meant to send it. I do that all the time, especially on Facebook, because a lot of those viruses used to send you stuff on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And you would go open the YouTube link, you have to sign in, and now you just gave them your sign-in credentials. So, so just like on Messenger, which I'm sure everybody gets stuff from on Messenger, and I got one last week where my friend sent me something on Messenger, and I, you're like, oh, it's your friend. And then you click on it, and then it's going to have stuff in there. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Which, and it did happen to be, I didn't click on it. I asked her if she sent me something. And then she posted to everybody she didn't send anything to anybody. It was a virus or whatever. It was a virus. Yeah. And that's what you do. You, you ask them. You ask them. One of the most common things is they'll think it'll be a spam and they'll say, hey, this looks like you, or hey, is this you? Oh, oh that was perfectly. Yeah, it's not liking my response. There we go. All right. I have a digital dilemma. Very digital and very dilematic. Alright. So now we're back to that screen. I've got a couple videos. Elijah, go get ready to check the volume. Ooh, I need to plug up my cord. Forgot about that. Pay no attention to electrical sound that you may or may not hear. I'm trying to plug my laptop charger into the TV, wanting to know why it won't fit. That's what happens when you get to church late and you're running and don't have your glasses on. Alright. Well, it's a good thing I've got no shame. <laughs> so we're going to play a, bit, a couple of videos. I have already put these on the church page. You may have seen them. If you have, watch it again. I just, I don't have confidence that everyone watches the stuff I put on Facebook. The gentleman in the elevator now is a candid star. These folks who are entering the man with the white shirt go in with a trench coat. And subsequently, one of the members of our staff will face the rear. And you'll see how this man in the church will <laughs> <laughs> tries to maintain. 
same as individuality. But little by little, he looks at his watch, but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more to the wall. Now we'll try it once again. Here's the candid subject. Here comes the candid camera staff, three of them at least. And uh, this man has apparently been in groups psychology's oldest and most popular pieces of research. A volunteer is told that he's taking part in a visual perception test. What he doesn't know is that the other participants are actors and he's the only person taking part in the real test, which is actually about group conformity. The experiment you will be taking part in today involves the perception of line length. The task will be simply to look at the line here on the left and indicate which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. So for example, if the actors have been told to match the wrong lines. The volunteer will be monitored to see if he gives the correct answer or if he goes along with the opinion of the group and gives the wrong answer. In the first test, the correct answer is to... Uh, one. 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 Two. One. Once again, the correct answer is two. Three. 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 The Ash experiment has been repeated many times, and the results have been uh, supported again and again. We will conform to the group. Again, we're very social creatures. We're very much aware of what the people around us think. Uh, we want to be liked. We don't want to be seen to rock the boat. So we will go along with the group. Even if we don't believe what people are saying, we still go along. One. 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 Group dynamics is one of the most powerful forces in human psychology. you've seen it before, great. If not, I'm glad you saw it now. I still chuckled. I, I have watched that, those videos, particularly the candy camera one, at least no less than 20 times in the past month, getting ready for this thing. And I still chuckle. <laughs> like the guy in the hat. <clears throat> what does that have to do with our digital dilemma? Well, Group conformity and peer pressure plays a lot in where we're going next. And that's talking about social media. I'm done with my phone. I think. I don't think I have any other videos. Oh, did not get to charge my laptop enough. Die on me. If it ain't one thing, it is a lovely another. Now, social media 
is more than just Facebook or Snapchat. It's a uh, Looking at all those different apps there, it's it's a great deal more. Some people like Twitter. Now I am, first of all, let me remind you that I said last week, I'm not here to scare anybody. I purposely took out pieces of information because it may have went a little too deep. You're welcome to go do your own study. I'm only here to create awareness. I'm not anti-social media. I am on Facebook. I have a Pinterest account because that's where I used to get a lot of my pictures from. I have an Instagram account. I have a Twitter account. I have a Parlor account. I have a Mainly account. I have a USA.life account. A lot of those were when I was trying to find a replacement for Facebook. As a youth leader, I tried to say, I even have a Snapchat account. I will not accept your friendship or follow you or whatever. I use that only to keep in touch with my former students at Job Corps. Because some of them live and die by Snapchat only. So, obviously, I don't think I've missed any. I never did do MySpace. That, that was a little bit before my time. But it's there. I'm not the only one, and you're not the only one. 2.46 billion people are estimated to have a social media account. I say that affects us. I know most of you have some form of social media account. You or somebody, everyone in here, I can tell by looking, I know your Facebook handle or your Snapchat name or whatever. I got you. So we're all involved. There are a lot of positives. We use social media to reach out to folks who are, live in other states, other Sometimes other countries. It's a beautiful thing. But again, with, with great ability to do good, there's also the great ability to do bad. And what I want to talk about today is not necessarily the intentional bad. I will reference some. But I want to talk about the unaware negative effects of social media for the most part. One, the first thing I want to talk about is cyberbullying. Now, Listen, cyberbullying is a real thing. I have a different outlook on bullying than other people, apparently. I was bullied a lot growing up. I was small for my age. I'm like, I don't, Daniel is blessed. He's big for his age. I was not, but he and I both started school early because of our September birthday. So when you're younger, kindergarten to second, third grade, a year difference is a big deal. So I was always a year less physically mature and couldn't keep up. I was bullied. I had an underbite that I used to go to speech therapy for. You know I still stutter when I go too fast. So I had a speech problem. It didn't help when I got glasses. It didn't help when I got braces. Because you know what happened when I got braces? They call it an appliance. It's a retainer that I had to wear at all times that had a thing. <laughs> I had braces on my bottom half, and I had a big, huge plastic thing. And it was designed, I thought I had my glasses on just now. It was designed to grab my bottom jaw and to keep constant pressure pulling it back in. And that's how they fixed my underbite. Go ahead and laugh, daughter. <laughs> Of all ages for that to happen was 12 years old in the 8th grade, in junior high. The only thing worse than that was the poor kid who had to wear the headgear. Kids don't wear headgear no more. At least I could hide behind her. And I tried, but then they separated our schedules and... I was the freak in the class. Believe it or not, I used to be shy. And so now I'm shy. And get, so what I'm telling you is I'm not asking for your pity. I'm telling you I understand bullying. Okay? That people are going to find a way to bully. I'm going to give you some, some stats. And I'm going to give you some advice. 
Victims of bullying, in this case cyberbullying, are twice as likely to suffer from anxiety, depression, and other health issues. Victims are three times more likely to be suicidal. Three times more likely to be suicidal. Now, I will say this just because I have to. That stat has more to do with parenting than it does to bullying. You're never going to stop a bully from being a bully. I mean, yeah, you may whip them and change their mindset, but I'm talking about bullies across the globe. There are always going to be jerks. There's always going to be somebody who wants to intimidate you. This anti-bullying movement is a waste of time. Hear me. I'm all for creating awareness. Yes, teachers need to you know, be, be aware. Teach your kids how to respond to bullying. That is going to solve the bullying problem. That would fix your suicidal tendencies. That's a parenting issue at home. Get involved, talk to your kids. I didn't feel comfortable talking to my parents about it. Okay? Create a relationship with your kids where they can talk to you about it. Anyhow, 88% of teens have witnessed cyberbullying. It's prevalent. Teach your kids to have the courage to stand up for others. Teach your, kids to make, see, teach your kids how to react to bullying, and you'll solve bullying. But you can't do that by trying to change someone else's behavior. You've got to start with yours. Another digital dilemma is addiction. It's hard to get someone to admit. It's hard to get an adult to admit that they're addicted to their phones, but phone addiction is a real thing. And it starts at a young age. In America, the average kid gets their first smartphone at the age of 10. I just, that baffled me. At the age of 10, getting a smartphone, knowing the abilities of a smartphone. So what it does is it, we're starting them at an early age. 50% of teens report feeling addicted to their phones, as do 27% of parents. I bet you there's more than 27% of parents addicted to their phones. We just, I told you, it's hard to get folks to admit to it. Another problem from our digital dilemma is a loss of attention span. This is amazing. In 2000, the average adult had a 12-second attention span, but in 2013, it went down to 8.25. We used to make fun of the goldfish for having a 9-second attention span, and we're now dumber than the goldfish when it comes to our attention span. It's because everything is so prevalent right there. Swipe, swipe, swipe. We're evolving into a dumber society, and that's part of our digital dilemma. Our mental health is an issue. A, a study of 5,000 people found that higher correlated use with self Let me rephrase this. I didn't type it well. 5,000 people were studied, and it was learned that with people who used their cell phones a lot had higher reports of declines in mental and physical health and life satisfaction. And you know it to be true. Because now... You're more, you, you think, you feel more aware of everyone else around you, and there's that constant comparison and expectation. Don't fall for it. I mean, I know somehow it's a natural instinct to want to keep up with the Joneses, and now all the Joneses are right here in front of us. They're, they're pushing these models and these superstars with Photoshop images. But it looks so real. But, the, but it's not. The 13-year-old girl doesn't use that same device to look up a real picture of that person. All they see is what th that idol of perfection, and they know they don't live up to it. That constant comparison. Pastors fall for it all the time. How many churches get on social media and are honest about every service? Boy, did service stink today. Boy, we had Bible study last Wednesday and only 
two people showed up. No, 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 no. That's not what they show you. That's not what they tell you. They brag on the good stuff. Right? Social media doesn't tell you everything. It only tells you what other people are showing you. Do not feel like you have to compare yourself to everybody because it affects your mental and physical health. Teenagers who spend three hours a day or more on devices are 35% more likely to have a risk factor for suicide than those who just spend one hour. 35% more likely. For those kids who spend five hours or more, which is more realistic, 71% more likely. That's huge. Now, I'm not saying 71% to be more suicidal. I didn't say that. I said to have a risk factor for suicide because it, it goes into this depression and how they handle their depression. Not everyone who's depressed is suicidal, okay? And depression is not the only risk factor for suicide. Anxiety, peer pressure, different things, you know, different things. So, but 71% more likely to have a risk factor. That, that's a, that, I think that's worthy to announce across the pulpit. Sleep deprivation. Can I get an amen on that? It's ironic. I myself have a, a habit, I have a routine. I understand the placebos that are in effect that your mind needs. I understand that psychologists will tell you, if you want to be able to go to sleep faster, stay off your bed. Stay off your bed until it's time to go to bed. But how many of us use our bed as our couch? That's where we watch TV. That's where we hang out. And so what happens is your mind does not differentiate what the bed's for. But if you were to stay off your bed and go sit on the couch until it's time to go to bed, your mind knows, okay. Kind of like a, a kid when you put it in his playpen. Well, it depends on the kids. Some of them want to fight that. <laughs> Who did not pop up their phone? Oh, well, it sounded like it's coming from over there. <laughs> See, someone's phone's going off. It's not life or death, I promise you. It might be, you never know. Well, what I'm saying, you should right? turn it off before church anyway. <laughs> so if it is life or death, it's your fault. If it's life or death, it's going to wake your us. That's what you would have done 20 years ago at church. You wouldn't have known. Yeah, but See, we've gotten used to that instant notification. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Sleep deprivation. The light affects your eyes. It affects your, your mind. The mind sees a bright light now. Young people like to dim their phones. They don't have this problem. Us old fogies <laughs> who need every ounce of brightness and then some, it's affecting your sleep. It's telling your brain to stay awake. So if you can dim your light and still see your phone, you need to before you go to bed. Or, we'll talk about that later. A, a bigger issue with our digital dilemma is that content is never deleted. It is never deleted. It says there there is no delete on the internet. WWW stands for World Wide Web. Every picture, every post, Every detail, it's there. How many news stories have you heard about a politician or a celebrity having their careers ruined over a tweet five years ago? It's a big deal. A couple last year, all the celebrities were sweating, boy, on the sexual charges. Kevin Spacey's career is gone. How many politicians said something that they was considered racist 10 years ago? You think your Snapchat's temporary? No. You think you feel secure because it tells you when they get a screenshot? No. First of all, it doesn't matter if it tells you 
they did a screenshot. They now have a picture of what you do. When I watch my students, first of all, some people say that you, there's a way around the notification. Irrelevant. Doesn't matter. I watch my students always carry multiple phones because they're all broke. None of them connect to a real network. They're all waiting for a Wi-Fi, so they have two, three phones at least. Never fail. You get two phones connected to Wi-Fi, they got a Snapchat here, and they take a picture of it with the other one. I've seen it. There is no security in Snapchat. All Snapchat does is give you a false sense of security so you'll make stupid decisions. One study in 2019 reported that nearly 40% of children have either received or sent a sext by the age of 13. If you don't know what a sext is, that's an inappropriate text, whether it's a picture or language, but it, they're having dirty talk through their phone. And the, the, again, that, that Snapchat is the worst one about it because it, it tells you that your picture is deleted after so long. You only got so many times you can pull it back up, whatever, and it, and it deletes it so that the girls will feel safe, or the boys even. It does go both ways. Majority girls. But it doesn't work that way. It's there. It, and especially if they were to take it and never put it online. If it's online, it's there. You say, oh, but the FBI can get involved and they can take it down. Can they? From everywhere? No, sir. They cannot. They can try, but they cannot. Employers often Google you. Be careful about setting your Facebook or your Instagram up to public. Because your employers will Google you during the interview and see what kind of activities you've been involved in. It's hard to fix a ruined reputation. It's hard. Now, let's, let, let's dig a little bit deeper on our digital dilemma. We're going to go a bit those in, in unintentional dilemmas. That I mentioned earlier, the unintentional side effects besides the mental health. How did social media get so big? Does anyone know? I mean, MySpace was not, it was the biggest thing we had, and it wasn't so big that half of you don't even know what I'm talking about. Daniel, do you know what MySpace is? Nope, so that, that age group down. Andrew does. Great, Mark. There's a gap there. You see the gap? Okay. Some folks are too old. Some, no fit. Some folks are too young. It was just before my time. Well, if I say my time, because I was old enough, I just didn't have the interest enough. It was, a per, it was like Facebook. You had your own personal page. You could put your music on it. You could do everything. It was your personal page. And people would go from page to page. And then Facebook came around, and that was really neat. People connecting to each other. Yay! It started out young folks, and then the, the boomers got on. And then the young folks didn't want to be on the same network as the boomers, so that's when Instagram and Snapchat took off. But they're all here, and they're all huge. It's not the advertisements that made them so big. They're so big that the advertisements were coming to them. People were paying a lot of money for it. It was the algorithm. An algorithm is a, uh, it's a formula designed to produce, to give them a result. On a separate, Pandora uses an algorithm. That's how they separate their music. When you ask for 80s, their algorithm tells them which music to put in the 80s. If you ask for Christian, their algorithm tells them which one. Well, Facebook, this is their newer one, uh, posts the creative, the type, recovery, the, I'm not going to go into detail what it means, but they keep track of everything you do. Not everything you post, everything you do. Every person you look up, every business you click on, every ad you click on, what, how often a day you do it, what time of day you do it, how often you don't do it, 
Do you just get on and look at your feed? Do you not click on it? Everything about you. And they're not selling that information. I don't want to give you that lie. There's more money in what they're doing now. Okay? They don't have to sell. When I say sell your information, they're not selling your age and your address and all that good stuff. No, no, no. They're selling your habits. That's what they're selling. Because advertisers can take that information and they know what ads to give you. They know when to post it. They know your, your habits and they know your likes and dislikes. And it just it kept funneling. They kept, they're good at what they do. Okay, Daniel likes this. Let's give him more of that. Andrea likes this. Let's give her more of that. And subtly, it's controlled our attention. We like it. Yay, this is what I like. Well, no doubt it's what you like. They're purposely giving you what you like. That's not a bad thing. That does not make them evil. I'm not, I'm telling you. I am no defender of Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or Google. I'm not defending them, but I'm also not blasting them. Okay? They're good at what they do. They made a lot of money marketing their product. That's, that's not a bad thing. People are paying big money because there's no better billboard than social media. Because of these algorithms, people will pay the money knowing that their product is going to be put in front of people who are interested in it. At least the higher chances of it. What about, okay, y'all probably heard too, like if you just say something, mm -hmm. like I'm interested in, you know, trainers, or I want to buy these kind of shoes or whatever, you didn't even type it in Google, mm -hmm. but then it's coming up on Facebook. Let's go back to the first thing we use when you are installing an app. That doesn't happen on a desktop PC. What does a what does a mobile device device have that the average desktop PC doesn't have? It has the microphone. Oh, okay. Microphone. It asks so they allow it. To. It asks for your permission. It demands your permission mm -hmm. to access your microphone. Your contacts. I don't know why the weather app, or let me put this this way, why else would your weather app need access to your phone app? Because they're selling advertising. So we can, yeah, so we can all tie in. <laughs> and now, we're at a point now as a consumer that we're okay with it. We would rather put up with it and keep our precious social media than to delete the app. Sometimes it's a way to shop. You just gotta say it, and then you see what all pops up. Yes, that's actually the new way to online shop these days. Uh huh. Which is probably not good. Now there are other ways around it. My phone doesn't do that, but I've got my phone a little more secure. I mean, you can check. I can't sit there and walk you through and tell you the generic statement and how to go around it. But there are some things you can do. I've noticed that it doesn't happen to me. It only happens to other people. I honestly don't know what I did to prevent that, but I'm not ungrateful. So is there a setting in Facebook you can turn it off? I just said. I know you said that, but is there, there's not a setting? There's a lot of settings. I got everything, when I go to Facebook settings, and I'm constantly on there because they're always changing their settings, okay? I, I look at my Facebook settings at least every other month. I really do, because they're always adding something different. At least a couple times a year, I have to check a new, there's a new block. There's a new change. I don't like notifications for everything in the world. You know, there's different, and that's, we'll talk about my compulsions to notifications here in a minute. Because it's good and it's bad. So, anyway, so yeah, I may have turned something off there. Advertisements. I did, I did turn off. Ad specific. Uh, there, is a, there is a setting in Facebook where it asks you, do you want ads tailored for you? And I said no. So maybe if I said no, maybe it doesn't care to listen because it doesn't matter. I don't care. And 
that may very well be the issue. Maybe they are listening, they're just not giving me the preferred ads, and therefore it looks like they're not listening. I really don't know. But that is why laptops come with that little slider over the camera. So people can't log into your laptop and look at you. That's a separate issue. But you know, the older laptops, newer laptops quit doing that for a little bit. Cause they didn't think people knew. But you see a little slider, a little window, you can lock that camera. And now they sell it as if a sticky tape, sticky note wouldn't do the same thing. But anywho, again, our behavior, huh? Oh, our behavior has become predictable, and that's not a bad thing. So where does our dilemma come from? Where is the dilemma in this? Because we give it so much of our attention, we can easily be, and I don't want to say manipulated, but that word would have fit. We can be directed. Anyone here, and I'm not trying to show you my evil side, or it's an old movie, but have anyone here seen the movie Arachnophobia? The spiders? Did you know that a spider cannot be trained? They have tried for forever. They're still trying. A spider cannot be trained. So then, how did they direct the spot to get the spiders to go where they wanted it to? By scaring it. They had the camera right here, and right behind it was a stick hitting the, the ground, chasing it away. That is the opposite of what social media is doing to us. Instead of spooking us away, it's got to carry. Here's more of that video you like. Here's more of those links you like. Here's more of that topic you like. Here's more of that content you like. And by directing us, they're actually dividing us. All that content you see is tailored just for you. And we forget that or we don't know that. Let's be honest. In this political hysteria that we're in, for the last few years, it has been a game for some people. What else can I be offended by? And they're looking for things to be offended by, right? And we see that, and we get frustrated. And we, we, we see what's happening here, and we see what's happening there, and we wonder, how can they think that way? Don't they see what's going on? They don't. Because their content has been tailored for them. They see what suits them. Your news feed is not universal. It is very much tailored for you, and we're missing out. We don't know what we don't know, and we assume too much. And it has caused a great deal of division. That's where a lot of it comes from. Let me read this to you. An internal memo to Facebook senior executives in 2018 says, Our algorithms exploit the human brain's attraction to divisiveness. If left unchecked, they'll feed users more and more divisive content in an effort to gain user attention and increase time on the platform. Why was Jerry Springer's show so popular? It's because we like to watch the freaks. We like the National Enquirer stories. We're, a dr we're drawn to drama. We like to watch the sideshows be sideshows. And so our div divisions are getting more and more extreme. We, we are intrigued if you're conservative then you, you may tend to enjoy more not just more conservative posts, but more anti-liberal stuff. Vice versa. If you're a liberal, you may enjoy fashion conservatives. And so it's not just drawing that line, it's pushing you further and further from the line to where you're no longer close enough to even be friendly. Am I making sense today? Do you understand what I'm saying? I, it's happening. I'm not speaking conspiracy theories. These are stats that can prove it. Fake news spreads six times faster.
Asher, then Accurate News on Twitter. And has a 70% chance to be more likely retweeted. Why? Because it clicks. Boy, I can't stand when people do that. They'll get this fake news story, but it fits their agenda. They like it. It sounds good. And they'll share it and not even care to look to see if it's credible. 80% of students, they mistake sponsored content. They think ads are legitimate news sources. They think, and I'm, when I say ads, I'm not talking about someone's campaign commercial, but that's good enough. People will, will take that hook, line, and sinker. But they'll get an ad that's sponsored. Second Amendment to a life, okay? I, I'm pro guns, of course, but there, there's a website, 2A for life. Well, they put out a lot of articles. What do you think those articles are supporting the guns. They're biased. Well, every story they put out is going to be biased towards that, and it's not always necessarily 100% true. It's written towards the bias. And people will forward it along, thinking it's gospel, and thereby creating. 64% of the people who joined extremist groups on Facebook did so because the algorithm steered them there. 64% of people who joined the extremist hate groups did so because they were directed. And again, Facebook is not saying, I'm going to put you there. No, no, no. Facebook is just doing what they're doing to make it more popular. The side effect is, it's causing this. Now, how are we allowing ourselves to be herded like sheep? Does anybody know what FOMO is? FOMO? Fear? Of missing out. It's a real thing. That poor penguin's looking over there at the other group wanting to know what are they talking about? Are they talking about me? What's going on? I want to be a part. I want to know. Maybe you don't even want to talk. You just want to know what's going on. A little bit of this is not bad. I hope you check our church Facebook page regularly to make sure you're not missing out. Unfortunately, some of us don't always check it. I don't have time to call everyone and to let you know we don't have church. I should try harder. I'm not defending myself, but I'm human. So I put it on there we don't have church. Or what really happened last Wednesday is I put on there that we do have church and not everybody checked it. Some folks missed out. They didn't know we had church members. But on the downside of FOMO is we are glued to it to make sure we're not missing out. We are consumed with what we don't have. Oh, look what they have. I want that. Oh, I'm missing out on the cute wreath. There are pages and pages of how to make wreaths, and there's competitions for it, and people want to make sure, if that's what your passion is, you want to make sure that you're not missing out on it. I used to be heavily involved in Razorback sports used to own season tickets, and I would subscribe and pay money to websites for fear that I was missing out on the latest recruiting news. It, it happened. So, it, I like to listen to Daniel. I've learned through him and other kids, but one of the greatest insults to a teenager is to be left unread. It makes you feel disrespected that they won't read what you wrote. Mm -hmm. But that's part of FOMO, fear of missing out, because you want read what I gotta say. Well, read I'm me. Read. read what I said. That's what you sound like, by the way. <laughs> so what can we do? <sighs> well, the first thing I want to tell you is you can seek out real connections. Seek out real relationships. Social networking platforms, this is from one author, he said, social networking platforms drove man closer to those in neighboring continents while driving him further apart from those in his neighborhood. We spend so much time interacting with strangers online that we don't interact with the people in our house. That 
that was my phone. Knock, knock, knock. That's me. I want to see. I forgot to mute my phone. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. But seek real friendships, real connections. Set a schedule or a time limit for your phone. Make sure to shut it off at a certain time if you need to. Make sure, maybe say it's not allowed at the dinner table. Whatever suits your family. Set limitations. Do not grab your device every time you get a notification. Now that's where my OCD comes from because I don't like the little flags. You can set that to where it doesn't show up. But then the FOMO kicks in and you wonder what you're missing out on. I'm big in texting. I don't like phone calls. Don't call me if you don't have to. <laughs> if you need to talk to your pastor, call me. That's fine. But I may not be able to answer during that order, so text me first. But if you just want to say hi, I can read that quite clearly. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being ugly. I'm saying my personality, okay? So... So I have my notifications for my text messages where I know what that is without a doubt because it's important to me. It may be a little too important to you. I wonder if it's too important to you. If you can't go through a church service without checking to see if someone messaged you, you have a problem, sir or ma'am. How do you, Some of you have been uncomfortable when I took your phone. That's a problem. It shouldn't have been no, it should not have been any problem at all. Just here you go. I can go an hour without it. But the fact that you had to think about it, it's part of our digital dilemma. Focus on gratitude. Focus on what you have rather than what you lack. That way that comparison won't affect you as much. On YouTube, Google, Facebook, do not click the red recommended links. Don't feed their algorithms. Make sense? Look up the information you're interested in. Don't follow their the steer. Every time you click on that re recommended link, they're like, aha. Uh, Netflix had an issue recently. They had that horrible movie about the young girls going through their pageantry, and these young girls are doing all these sexual dances and moves and whatnot. And I had some friends that were watching it just so they knew what people were talking about. Netflix doesn't care why you click on it. All they know is, ha-ha, they clicked on it. It's successful. And they kept it alive. Be careful what you click on. Allow, now here, this is huge. And this is something I need to work on. Allow opposite viewpoints. I used to have a, a wide spectrum of opinions on my friend list. Because I don't get my feelings hurt if you disagree with me. I could wade right into the deepest of liberal websites, you all know I'm conservative, and I won't get my feelings in a ruffle. I won't get angry. Now, I can't listen to them. I don't want to listen to them on the radio or, or TV. I can't listen to them, but I can read it without getting bothered. But I wound up deleting all these people because of their language more than anything. So what happens is, every time you post something, the only thing you're going to get back are amens. Your, your thoughts are never challenged. You need to know what the other people are thinking. Even if they're wrong and the day is long, you need to be aware of how they're feeling. That'll keep that, that dividing gap a little small. That'll keep you from getting steered into those extremist groups. Web browsers are big on tracking you. Uh, Google for years, people love their uh, incognito mode and you know they all have this incognito mode where they don't keep cookies. And people are excited about that. Yay, they don't keep my cookies. They can't, they're not tracking what I do. Wrong. They're still tracking it. They're just not posting it where you can see it. There are browsers, browsers that don't do that. Uh, that duck. Duck, duck, duck. Duck, duck, go is good. <sighs> Mozilla had an executive start their own, and I've forgot what it was. 
They don't track it. CC Cleaner has their own browser now, and they don't track it. So they're all, you just have to do your research. Because Google does track it, and when you do your Google searches, it only gives you stuff that thinks you're interested in, and then you've got to go down the list to get the other information. So, well, think about that when you're Googling political candidates. That's, that's how people get manipulated by not knowing better. And lastly, lastly, own your decision. It is not social media's fault that any of this happened. It's not. Because they didn't make you click anything. They didn't make you keep that phone up. You did that. Own your decision. And make better decisions. Any other questions before we turn off the recording and end it? We're good? A lot of you can go turn that off. Or Tyler beat you to it or 